C. Wilfred Griggs wrote an interesting chapter on the Book of Mormon, not merely an ancient book. In Susan Easton Books, Susan Easton Black's book, Expressions of Faith, Deseret Book and Farms, 1996. He says, acceptance of the Book of Mormon is a spiritual, it's not an academic exercise. It is, of course, interesting to look into whatever materials are available in the past, such as documents and archaeological artifacts, to enhance one's understanding of the Book of Mormon. But such things cannot be an adequate substitute for a spiritual witness from God concerning the divine origin and message of the Book of Mormon. This observation is elementary to anyone who compares the limited and changing nature of scholarly activity with the infinite and eternal perspective of God that is transmitted when one is taught by the Holy Ghost. This is the proper relationship of academia, scholarship, and true faith. It says on page 202, a study of ancient cultures is both rewarding and instructive, not only because one gains increased understanding about human history and experience, but also because we better appreciate the context when prophets received their revelations. A knowledge and value and accuracy of, of history and antiquity, however, for sources of information relating to the past were perfectly, were imperfectly recorded. They have even been unevenly preserved and rediscovered, and they are rarely interpreted with unity and certainty by modern scholars. Evidence that is persuasive to some scholars as establishing a point of view is often seen by others as leading to a different conclusion. Each student of the past encounters ongoing disputes about such fundamental questions as the relationship of the Iliad and the Odyssey to the historical and archaeological sources. The connection, if any, between Socrates and Plato and his writings about Socrates, Aristophanes and Xenophonics included. The difficulty in determining how and when Christianity spread throughout the countries and regions not discussed in the Book of Acts, etc. Where there is evidence relating to such questions, it is not seen or accepted by all scholars in the same way and the lack of evidence does not invalidate the question or keep one from guessing at or searching for answers. This is the properly nature of scholarship. This is the proper attitude of archaeology, archaeologists and historians. If continuing discovery and change regularly require new and revised thinking about classical and ancient Near Eastern cultures where the history of scholarship is relatively long and where excellent conditions exist for continuing archaeological discovery, one ought not to be hasty in passing final judgment on the place of the Book of Mormon in ancient New World cultures where the history of scholarship is still in its early and progressive stages and where conditions for archaeological work in Central America specifically are much more difficult than in the Mediterranean Basin. See, the two situations is a completely different comparison. We have to keep that in mind. This is not to say that connections shouldn't be sought or cannot be found. But one should not be unduly concerned if the book's proper placement in both culture and geography remains the work for some future time. People read the Iliad for centuries before an even an insecure relationship to the Mycenaean world discovered toward the close of the 19th century was proposed in modern times. That didn't stop them from appreciating and enjoying the Iliad. It's worth repeating that acceptance of the Book of Mormon is a spiritual, it's not an academic matter. That's critical to comprehend. Confronted with a mass of New Testament manuscripts and growing collection of non-canonical writings in the entire last century, a group of scholars, the Jesus Seminar, determined to identify the authentic sayings of Jesus in all these sources. What's interesting is, after years of meetings and deliberations, these critical scholars based their decisions on the process of making empirical factual evidence, evidence open to confirmation by independent neutral observers, the controlling factor in historical judgments, concluded that 82% of the words ascribed to Jesus in the Gospels were not actually spoken by him. Three sayings of Jesus found in the Gospel of Thomas which is a post-resurrection text in Egypt in 1947, was considered authentic by the Jesus Seminar. From this example, 
provided by the more than 200 voting fellows of the seminar, it's obvious that the evidence of newly discovered manuscripts and archaeological information do not result in increased faith or confidence in the scriptures. For those who have faith and confidence, scholarship can enhance and enlighten, but it can never be an adequate substitute for the spiritual witness from God concerning the truths found among the prophets and their writings. These truths touch the hearts and minds of people in every age and culture, and they appear to be contemporary to readers of every period. It is not the antiquity of the Book of Mormon, but its timelessness that makes it attractive to readers all over the world today. That's a fabulous way to look at it. It's not necessarily that it's just antique that makes it value. It is timeless. It teaches truth. The antiquity of work does not alone guarantee it for its value. If the Book of Mormon were merely an ancient work, it would command attention only as a relic, an object worthy of respect for its age and venerability. But it's not just that. That's the point. It's interesting how he says some critics have pointed to the Book of Mormon's contemporaneity with the 19th century as disproving its antiquity. Yet it is that very quality of contemporaneity a quality that could be attributed to many ancient writings that makes the book not merely a curiosity from the past, but a relevant and compelling work for the present. This is how scholars understand scholarship, archaeology, and scriptures. There is a balance, there's a relationship to work together in understanding how they fit together, if they fit together. Scholarship never has the last word. C. Wilford Griggs is a very good scholar. He's obviously read the scholarship. If you think scholarship is looking for proof all the time, you're mistaken. All you have to do is read the scholarly materials, get into the scholarly journals, the Journal of Biblical Literature, the Journal for the Study of the New Testament, the Journal for the Study of the Pseudepigrapha, Newman, Semea, any of the articles and the scholars, you read a few hundred of those and you see they never have the last word, they never claim to have the final and only possible interpretation, and they're constantly refuting everyone else's interpretations and retranslating the texts based on new discoveries coming forth still in our day. The final word is not in yet, not either in scholarship of the scriptures or in the archaeology, nor in understanding the history. New materials come out all the time. This is the essence of scholarship and archaeology. This is why if you place your ultimate faith in man, you don't have ultimate faith. If you place your ultimate faith in the dirt of archaeology, you're looking the wrong direction. You don't need to look down into the earth for proof of God. You need to look up into the heavens. You need to pray to him. It's interesting how Christians argue against this. Some Christians argue against this. Some blatant anti-Mormon apostates argue against this. Well, they don't have faith in God. They have faith in man. And we're just puny mortals. Like Carl Sagan said in his magnificent book, Pale Blue Dot, we're nothing but a speck of dust in the grand cosmos and scheme of things. Why put our faith in that? And it's only temporary. No, you want the eternal answers to eternal truth, you go to the eternal God and get it from him. Don't you have faith he can give it to you? <laughs> what little faith you have then? If you're going to lose your faith based on anti-Mormon arguments, on the silliness of them saying scholarship has at last proven the Bible true and archaeology has proven this and that about the Bible, you don't have faith to begin with. The anti-Mormons never have the final word, ever. They don't have any archaeologists on their side either. That I know. I know whereof I speak. So there's the issue. 